Go to bed after Isha and you won't need your Prozac. You know, people need to just do get back to fitrah. And the worst thing is the computer. You know, all this Facebook, just get off Facebook. I'm giving you good advice. Alhamdulillah. So, the, the last section we looked at was when to read حفظ اللسان فاعتزل ولاحظا and سعيهم من العمل that if you want to guard your tongue basically that you have to avoid people and that was from uh, Imam Al-Junaid said to uh, to avoid people which generally being they say being in good company is better than being alone and being alone is better than being in bad company so it's it's actually good for people to be in good company uh, and one of the reasons why institutions like this were built was for people to come together I mean these were generally male oriented societies and organizations but if you look in Islamic history you'll actually find uh, the women had their own tekes, they had their own uh, institutions in Baghdad for instance they had a um, they had houses for women who when they got divorced they would put them into spiritual retreats mm -hmm. and they would spend that time just like seeing divorce as actually an opportunity for a spiritual opening uh, so um, and then in China the, a, uh, an, the female masjid developed in that society that you actually had segregation in the masjids and um, and spirituality is is something that uh, men and women have different spiritual paths and experiences and uh, even though our practices are similar the the um, the idea of, of not segregating is something that the Muslims um, just found completely that was normative Islam. It's only very recently that you've gotten any calls for this kind of idea of a mixed congregations and gender mixing. Um, but it's certainly not uh, Islamic and the Prophet said, uh, was very clear about that. On the other hand, the extreme culture of, of marginalizing uh, one group and um, putting them into a type of isolation is also another type of extreme and that tends to be culturally dominant in certain cultures and certainly many Muslim cultures were like that but not all of them and so these are things that modern Muslims have to learn to navigate uh, and recognizing the mutaghayyarat and the thawabit, the things that are uh, that change in Islam and the things that are not, not changeable and, and uh, in many ways Islam is a it's a religion that it has within it a lot of internal mechanisms that ensure that it won't be altered because the Prophet Sallallahu came at a time when Christianity and Judaism were s filled with so many different sectarian versions that it would be impossible for Christians to agree on uh, doctrines and agree on what the ecclesia or the congregation was and the, the Jewish tradition also fell into sectarianism and so there is a very strong prohibition of sectarianism in the Quran and the, the way the Muslims resolve the problem of human diversity, intellectual and spiritual diversity, and yet at the same time maintaining a unity and preventing uh, the community from devolving into sectarian groups was to have a broad-based, diverse, scholastic and spiritual tradition that enabled different opinions and different viewpoints 
to be honored and acknowledged as long as they were within the constraints of the or the parameters that were clearly demarcated by the scholars like Imam Shafi'i and the later Usuli giants that gave us an interpretive or hermeneutic methodology that enabled Muslims to uh, interpret their books in a way that would prevent them from going astray. So for those of us that are in the West, it's very important to find Muslims that you can congregate with and uh, spend time with. It's important, community is important, and no man is an island. You, you can't live in isolated uh, conditions spiritually. It's, it's not healthy, and that's why uh, the congregation is important. Yet Allah ma'al jama'a, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's providential hand is with the jama'a. So it's very important to, to adhere to um, people that are like-minded. And in the famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ilzam jama'at al-Muslimin wa imamahum, cling to the group of Muslims, the congregation and their imam. And, and he said, what if, وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ إِمَامٌ وَلَا جَمَعِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ What if there's not an imam or a congregation? And then he said, اَعْتَزَلِ الْفِرَقْ كُلَّهَا then withdraw from all the sects because sectarianism is not Islamic and so you have to uh, avoid being in the sectarian mind it's a diseased mind it's a diseased mind and you're better off alone than in a sectarian mind and that's what that hadith is clearly indicating that and this is why Imam al-Ghazali couldn't stand sex because he studied every single sect that, that was worth studying during his lifetime. He he's decided, okay, let's see what they're all claiming. And he, he learned them better than they knew themselves. So he became a master of the Bataniya, he became a master of the Falasifa, he became a master of the Usuli scholars, he became a master of the Mutakallimeen. Every group, he mastered what they had. And the sectarian mind is a mind that does not take its own positions to their end conclusion. And that's how they end up in sex, because they haven't fully thought the thing out. And, and that's what he did, and that's why he ended up being the most universal Muslim of that uh, period. And then his teaching became this universal teaching that was acknowledged by the vast majority of, of, of the Ummah after him. And that's why his, book, his books were honored wherever uh, Islam was taught, Imam al-Ghazali is there. And it's only recently that you have these attacks against him. I mean, there were people during his time that attacked him, and that's the nature of genius. It's always going to be attacked. So, um, you know, that, take that, understand that what he's talking about is, the, is withdrawing from company that is going to be harmful. So the uns with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what you should really be after uh, so that you don't need, because a lot of people just need company to, because they can't be alone, which is another problem. And, and this is, the age that we're living in is very serious because it's invented all these ways for people to be diverted. And if you haven't read it, it's worth reading Neil Postman's book, Amusing Ourselves to Death, because that's pretty much what's going on now. It's just, they'll amuse you until you die. And so then, uh, go ahead, Bismillah. وَقَلِّلِ الطَّعَامَ وَالذِّكْرَ أَدِمْ وَسُورَةِ قَدْرٍ وَنَاسٍ الْتَزِمْ Lessen the amount of food you eat and be constant in remembrance of Allah and recite regularly two chapters of the Qur'an, particularly the night of power and mankind. So, وَقَلِّلِ الطَّعَامَ One of the things that's interesting about 
the, the prophetic way is the, the prophets always teach uh, lessening your food intake. So fasting is always part of uh, the prophetic teaching. You'll find fasting uh, all over the world. The idea of, of not eating for a period of time. Ramadan and, and then the, the fast that we do throughout the year. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged fasting three days out of the month. For the Malikis, it was, they tended to do it on the 1st, the 10th, and then uh, the 20th uh, day. Um, the other mezhabs do it on what are called the Ayyam Rabayad, the white days, uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th days of the month. Malikis can do that uh, also. Uh, there's there's a, a paper that I wrote on that if you want to look at that difference of opinion. But um, that's how Malik did it. So three days out of the month, the idea is 10 hasanat for each day. So it's multiplied 10 times. It's as if you're fasting the whole month. And, and the Prophet did not encourage to fast more than that. If, if, you, if you do fast, um, then the, the, the next one is doing the Monday and Thursdays. And then the last fast, and he said to not go beyond that, was to do the fast of Dawood. Now, in Rajab and Sha'ban, it's mandub in the Maliki Madhab, and you have to check with your Madhab, but it's mandub to fast those two months. So you can fast the entire months. Uh, if you want. Um, and then, other than that, uh, the, the traditional practice was to do something consistent. So the best thing if you're going to fast is to do the three days out of the month. Marabtar Hajj fasted three days his, his whole life, uh, every, every, uh, every month. Just consistent his whole life. And one of the things about the early community, the Sahaba and, and those who followed them, they did not take on practices that, that, that they did not continue. So we dabble, do some dhikr here, a little bit of dhikr there, read some Quran here, read some Quran there. No, they were consistent in their practices. And this is the secret of a spiritual path. If you want to get benefit from any spiritual path, you have to be consistent in your practice, even if it's a little bit. It's better to do a little bit consistently than a lot inconsistently. Really, it's much better. So you have this energy, you get energy. No, you, you have to ignore the, the vicissitudes of your ego where the ego has energy sometimes and not. It's everything like that. Exercise, anybody who, know, who does any exercise knows that if you do a little bit here, a little bit there, it's just of no benefit. It's better to do a little bit every day than a lot you know, once a week. In fact, it can be harmful to do that if you try to do that. You can actually hurt yourself. So it's much better just to be consistent and then increase that practice if you find that you're, you're able to do that. So instead of trying to uh, start all at once doing that, if you're not doing the sunnah now, you should be doing the sunnah, then just do two and be consistent with it. Don't try to take them all on. You, you should never leave the two after maghrib the sunnah of the two after Maghrib, the witr after Isha, the two and the one, and then the, the Fajr, the Raghiba in the Maliki and the, the Sunnah al-Fajr, the Nafila al-Fajr. Those you should never leave. That should, that's baseline after the Fard. But then you add to those. So you can do two before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr, or four before Dhuhr, two before Asr. But be consistent in your practice. If you travel, then if you do a wird normally back home, but when you travel, things get upset, you get the reward of doing it if you were consistent back home. So if you find on your journeys you're not able to keep that up, that's, that happens. You still get the reward because you were consistent with it in your time of residence. So it's very important to be consistent in your practice. And the single most important thing is the fard. We've got Muslims all over the world doing all of these extra acts and then they're, they don't, they're not vigilant about their fard. That is the sign of ittiba al-hawa. That's the sign that you're following your nafs. So there's people that do mawlid and they go and they have these mawlid celebrations and they're not praying. 
or they're not praying on time or they go to a mawlid and they go till three in the morning and then they sleep through fajr they were better going to sleep after isha and getting up for fajr than sp standing, st uh, spending the whole night in some extra act and th this is the confusion the, the early qawm, if you study the early qawm, they didn't do anything after Isha. This idea of doing dhikr after Isha and things like that, they didn't do that. That wasn't the sunnah of the early people. They went to bed after Isha because they were people of the They were the people of the, the sahar, the people before dawn. They went to bed after Isha. The Prophet ﷺ went to bed after Isha. Dr. Winter talks in the contentions about artificial light and how people now are in front of pixelated uh, images at nighttime, wreaking havoc on their hormones. So serotonin, melatonin, all these uh, hormones that are really important and they're regulated by natural light were in our artificial light all the time and so people aren't well and they're wondering why they're depressed <laughs> just go to bed after Isha and you won't need your Prozac you know people need to just do get back to fitra and the worst thing is the computer you know all this Facebook just get off Facebook I'm giving you good advice get off Facebook get a life live with people visit people visit your relatives have tea with real human beings. Don't, don't uh, you know, spend time with people that you don't know or these uh, distant people in some far corner of the earth and you don't know your neighbors, you don't know the people around you. Really, it's a very weird time. Very weird. The, the, the earlier people, I mean, we are becoming autistic as a species. And it's not for nothing that autism is one of the fastest growing problems in Western countries. Autistic people, people that cannot function as human beings. They've lost their ability to function as normal human beings. So they're off in their own worlds, the iPod people, right? Pods, the invasion of the body snatchers. The pod takes over, right? It takes your being. That's why it's not I am a pod. They removed the verb to be and they just said I pod because the being is no longer there. And then their image is a shadow with two little ear earphones coming out of their ear. It's just a shadow. There's no human there. You're just a shadow of a self. And, and this is what this is the modern character in all his glory with his little t-shirt that said I'm with stupid and his shorts looking like he's uh, five years old and, 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 and there he is with his little pot belly uh, eat, licking his ice cream cone as it drips down his hand and, and he's watching uh, somebody do break dancing on the boardwalk this is, this is Khalifat Allah fil ard or there he is, or she, on this airplane that took all of this incredible ingenuity to create. Centuries of human beings working in mathematics, developing. The Muslims helped to bring about the airplane. And there he is on the airplane, the height of human evolution, and he's playing hangman on, on an iPad or solitaire to pass time because he doesn't know what to do with his time anymore. Like the Bedouin on his way to, from Temen Rasset to Timbuktu and the Frenchman said, how long does it take you to get there by camel? He said, it takes me two weeks. He said, I can make it in less than a day on my airplane. And the Bedouin said, what do you do with the time that you saved? Because <laughs> he's out there in the middle of the desert looking up at the stars saying subhanaka ma khadaqta hadha batida and I know it's true because I live with them right you own the human lives from Rome to Timbuktu lonely nomads wandering oh tell star to you right? 
So, you, you know, you decide what you want to do with your life. You're, most of you are still young people. You decide if you want to be one of those pod people because they're all over the place. It's amazing. You know, watching the same empty films, talking about the same empty things. Oh.